Today, let's talk about flights over people with your drone, quad or FPV here in the United States. And I'll be perfectly honest, I spent way too much time trying to summarize and decode some of this information. So do me a favor, like or subscribe if you get any value out of this video. Okay, so lots of information out there and my goal in this video is to streamline as much of the information as I can. And I really hope that when you're done watching this video, you'll know exactly what rules to follow if you plan on flying over people. And all the information I'm covering in this video is also on the FAA website. So I'm gonna leave all relevant links down below so feel free to check those out for yourself as well. Okay, now with that being said, that the first thing that you'll wanna know is if you're a recreational flyer, as outlined under section 44809, there are about nine rules under that section, and I'm gonna put them all up here on the screen. One of those rules is to follow the safety guidelines of an FAA recognized community-based organization or CBO. Now, right now, as of this video upload, there are four CBOs listed on the website. Now, Although I haven't read through all of the individual CBO guidelines, for each organization, I did find the FPV Freedom Coalition or uh, CBO states in general terms that their position is that it should be avoided. So in short, as a recreational flyer, you're still responsible for following the CBO guidelines that you've selected as it pertains to flying over people. So it's not exactly black and white and I hope this makes sense. I noticed several videos overlooked or misspoke on this specific topic, so I wanted to clarify it at the beginning of this video. And that being said, if you don't meet all the criteria of a designated CBO, then the FAA will consider you to be part 107 pilot, which means they'll expect you to have a remote pilot certificate. The drone needs to be individually registered, etc. etc. So everything I'm going to talk about in this video is specific to part 107 certified pilots and not the piece that was carved out under section 44809, which is the exception for limited recreational operations or the section specific to recreational flyers. Okay, so let's break this down into small bite-sized pieces to make it a little more digestible. The first thing you may wanna know is the flight over people FAA rules we're talking about went into effect back on April 21st of 2021. This video is being uploaded on January 25th, 2023. And the biggest takeaway from this video should be that the FAA has broken down flights over people in the four specific categories. The first category is the simplest. This is what the FAA defines as category one. For category one operation, there are two simple requirements. The first, a small unmanned aircraft is permitted to operate over people, provided the small unmanned aircraft weighs 0.55 pounds or less. And that includes everything that is on board or otherwise attached to the aircraft at the time of takeoff and throughout the duration of the operation. Second bullet point, the aircraft must contain no exposed rotating parts that would cause lacerations. That being said, the FAA does not define how you prevent exposed rotating parts. It can be prop guards or some other method. The FAA leaves that up to the industry to clarify or define. Now, there is one caveat to category one. In addition, for a category one operation, no remote pilot may operate the aircraft in sustained flight over open air assemblies unless the operation is compliant with remote ID. I did two previous videos on remote ID. I'll put that link up here somewhere. So I'm not gonna go into detail uh, about that. Uh, but again, you can check out those videos here if you want more information on that. And it's also worth noting that the FAA does give some examples of what they consider sustained flight in their documentation. In short, sustained flight over an open air assembly includes hovering above the heads or persons gathering in an open air assembly, flying back and forth over an open air assembly, or even circling above the assembly in such a way that the unmanned aircraft remains above some part of the assembly. The FAA also clarifies that for categories one, two, and four, that operation does not include a brief one-time transition or transitioning over a portion of the assembled gathering where the transit is merely incidental uh, to a point-to-point -point operation unrelated to the assembly. So again, in short, category one could be called a self-certification category because you as the drone pilot determine if you meet all the criteria to fly under this specific category. One, 
For example, does my drone weigh 0.55 pounds or less? And secondly, does my aircraft contain any exposed or rotating parts that would cause laceration? If you can answer both of these questions, then you can classify uh, or self-certify that your flight is a category one. And I mention this because the other categories, category two, three, and four, are not what I would consider self-certification categories. And I'll also mention there are several camera drones out there on the market today, drones like the DJI Mini uh, 3, the Mini 3 Pro, Mini SE, probably a few others. DJI advertises them as sub 249 grams. However, once you add prop guards, their batteries, or any other accessory, they're often over the threshold of 0.55 pounds or less, so they're no longer gonna qualify as a category one. I mentioned that because it's just something to always keep in mind. Now, next we have what the FAA calls category two and category three, which have, they're gonna call it performance-based eligibility requirements for operating over people uh, that weigh more than 0.55 pounds, but do not have an airworthiness certificate under part 21. So category two and category three also have what's called a means of compliance document and a declaration of compliance document, which the FAA is leaving up to the industry People like drone manufacturers or individuals to provide that documentation through their own testing to the FAA and define the drone as a Category 2 or Category 3 type drone. Now, the UAS Declaration of Compliance website is up and running. It's open to the public. I'll put a screenshot up here. You'll find two public lists on the website. In short, the UAS declaration of compliance website is where you're going to eventually see all the drones meeting the criteria for categories two, three, and four. Not much to see on there right now. So I've noticed that you can filter under type and select uh, OOP for the aircraft with declaration of compliance for operation over people or the RID for aircraft with declaration of compliance for remote ID. Quite a few aircrafts already listed for remote ID compliance, but only found one aircraft listed to date for operation over people. Bottom line, if you don't see your drone listed on the declaration of compliance page, then it does not have a category currently. Uh, so in short, you're not doing flights over people under category two, three, or four anytime soon. You're pretty limited to category one today, and that's with the understanding that you've met category one requirements. Now, a small four inch FPV like the one here is 216 grams with a battery, and that's without any ducts or prop guards. Additionally, for category two operation, no remote pilot in command may operate a small unmanned aircraft in sustained flight over an open air assembly unless the operation is compliant with remote ID. Okay, category three has more operating restrictions. A pilot cannot operate the aircraft over open air assemblies and the pilot can only operate the aircraft over people if one, the operation is within or over a closed or restricted access site and all people on site are on notice that the aircraft may fly over them. And secondly, the small UAS does not maintain sustained flight over any person unless the person is participating directly in the operation or located under a covered structure or inside a stationary vehicle, and it can provide reasonable protection from the small unmanned aircraft. Okay, we're getting there. And finally, you have category four operation. This category allows small unmanned aircraft issued an airworthiness certificate under part 21 to operate over people so long as the operating limitations specified in the approved flight manual do not prohibit operations over people. And again, the pilot cannot do sustained flights over open air assemblies unless the operation is compliant with remote ID. Category four is something you and I will never deal with. It has an airworthiness certificate associated with it. It's an expensive and timely process and we can take it off the table completely. It's just not something that we'll ever uh, as individuals will deal with. So in conclusion, can you fly over people legally in the US? Yes. So will you be doing it anytime soon legally? Most likely not. A few of you, yes. If you're flying a sub 250 gram drone that meets all the criteria of category one, 
then you're in good shape. Uh, but again, probably not likely to happen anytime soon. Category two, three, and four aircraft still aren't listed on the FAA's declaration of compliance website as of late January, 2023, the making of this video. Well, actually there was one drone listed under category three, and that's the uh, AG Eagle EBX series, which appears to be a mapping drone. Other than that, no other aircraft have been classified yet under categories two through four. And that's it for this video. If you made it this far, thanks for hanging in, hanging in there. I know it's a lot of content and it's quite, quite dry, uh, but do me a favor. If you did get any value out of this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, take care. We'll see you in the next video.